Hello friends, welcome to Civil Architecture Tutorials again. So today we discuss regarding the different types of waterproofing materials and uh, waterproofing treatments. So before that we discuss the difference between damp proof or, or the dampness and the waterproofing or what is called dampness or what what makes the waterproof what makes the water damping also so this is the usual question in uh, interviews so dampness occurs where water comes through seepage and capillary action for example uh, we used to give the damp proof coats uh, dpc in the basement as you know for around one inch or two inch thickness so why we are providing there because the water comes through there uh, through capillary action from the ground so that is an example of dampness or it can come through seepage also this type of water seepage or water coming is called dampness and where we are applying the water uh, proofing I think that is usually in the water tanks or in kitchen uh, or in septic tank or sewage treatment plant and or a, a UG tank or underground uh, tank actually waterproofing is uh, should be applied where the hydrostatic pressure is the, always there hydrostatic pressure you know in the if we store water in a particular tank of course there is a pressure called hydrostatic pressure because the storage of water itself is asserting that pressure upon the walls of that tank so that is called hydrostatic pressure so wherever the hydrostatic pressure is coming into application there we need to provide waterproofing uh, treatment we have to provide so that is regarding the dampness and waterproofing treatment then there are two types of uh, waterproofing one is reactive waterproofing material and other is non-reactive waterproofing material like you see here uh, non-reactive and reactive so non-reactive is, is a material which will not react when the water comes into contact with that particular chemical or material but reactive is reactive membrane or reactive waterproofing material is the material which comes when it comes into contact with the water there will be some kind of reaction happens such a material is called crystalline material so when water comes into contact with the crystal with this material this material will change to crystalline mode and it prevents the water to enter into the uh, into the surface and that is these two types of waterproofing that is reactive and non-reactive and another thing uh, the waterproofing treatment depends upon the location where you are going to apply this waterproofing course okay so let us see this example that is suppose this is a building this is a tower okay you can see this is a tower and this is the deck of that tower and this is the ground level this is the ground level okay and then there is a basement one then the uh, second basement then there's a sewage treatment plant stp there then there's an underground tank here okay and this is the retaining bar and this is the raft foundation different types of water materials waterproofing materials that we are using at different locations and the treatment also varies okay so here we will discuss the different types of materials using in different locations so the waterproofing material that we are using uh, in uh, deck area and terrace is different from that we are using in kitchen and toilet or balcony or maybe what we are using in basement stp basement this basement to ug tank also it varies because the surface and the exposure to atmosphere is different in in these different different locations so based upon that we can differentiate the water proofing material into two that is two component cementitious water proofing material and the other is single component waterproofing material so let us see what is called two component cementitious waterproofing material this is called tapered also this type of uh, waterproofing uh, water uh, proofing treatment is called tapered which is usually we used in a small area that is in kitchen area or toilet area okay all this area we are using this uh, two coats material so what is this two component cementitious material of course there is the one component is always cement and the other component is polymer so the one main thing that i want to tell you is that if there is waterproofing thing is there material is there polymer is a must so i will say polymer equals to waterproofing so always keep in mind that if waterproofing have to be done then there should be the presence of polymer so this in this two component one component is polymer plus cement that is 
two components that is called take bridge which is we were usually applying in the kitchen slab or toilet toilet you can see uh, the main waterproofing uh, treatment we are using these two component materials and second one that single component we are using it in deck area you see the deck area and terrace area which is called pu or polyurethane polyurethane we can brush it or we can paste it it, it comes in different different um, forms and uh, application also varies different it can be fluid or it can be in sheet model okay we can put it in deck area and in terrace area and pu it is called the polyurethane elastomer membrane that is a single component and now the membranes that we are using in tech area also varies in its form like i said before that it comes in fluid as well as in uh, membrane in sheet model also sheet type also so if it is in fluid model it is called the polyurethane and another uh, fluid thing is called poly polymeric asphalt or bitumen that is it can be bitumen or or polyurethane in in the fluid form we can use for this deck area and terrace area but the thing is that the difference between this polyurethane application and the bitumen application is that for polyurethane application it happens in cold treatment we, we, we can apply it in cold you don't need any hot treatment to apply the polyurethane onto the surface but for uh, asphalt or bitumen we need heat to apply it on the surface without heat it cannot be applied on the surface and the difference between this kitchen and the deck slab is the atmospheric difference that is the temperature will be high and it is uh, open to rain also in the open area and it is a very uh, large volume of area <clears throat> where we need to provide water treatment in the deck slab and the terrace slab but in kitchen and toilet the area will be small and the temperature variation will also be less so that is the main difference between these two so wherever the uh, area is very less we use two component uh, cement dishes or tape grid and wherever the area is big we use we usually go for the single component water treatment material okay and then come to this i said there are two types of membranes fluid membrane and there are sheet membrane so in sheet membrane there are four types of sheets are available the latest one is tpo that is called thermoplastic poly polyurethane that is the new type of uh, durable sheet material which is they are usually used for uh, covering the deck slab or the terrace slab okay and the second one is APP or rubberized as asphalt that is like you said like I said that is the big bitumen bitumen part bitumen sheets which are which comes in uh, uh, in a particular size but the main disadvantage of this rubberized asphalt is that uh, the joint where one sheet joins with the other will have always have problems because it comes off after some time because of the temperature variation the rubber will uh, get expanded and it will get contracted when the temperature changes so uh, finally the joint will come off so normally now people are not going for such kind of rubberized uh, rubberized uh, asphalt the second one is sbr synthetic rubber synthetic rubber sheet and the third one is thermoplastic so these four types of sheets we are using nowadays and so now comes to suppose if we are going for some government projects if you are preparing for the boq of that government projects the usual terms that or usual materials that we can find in the uh, BOQ of government projects are the quota stone quota stone suppose this is the government building okay and this is the basement and uh, the material that they are usually using in India uh, to for the waterproofing is use of quota stones uh, um, with uh, the uh, cement mortar and the mixture of polymers in it so why you are uh, adding the polymer mixture in, in, in the slurry or the mortar, cement mortar is to give it a waterproofing treatment so that quota stone itself will, will prevent the uh, uh, water entering into the basement but along with that in the joints the cement slurry with polymers will be using okay and then the second one is crystallization crystallization especially if quota stone we are using it for this retaining wall this side this side and this side also on the flooring of this basement and for crystallization where we are using is that when we are doing this raft raft concrete raft foundation or also when we are doing this concrete for this retaining wall this uh, crystalline uh, material which acts as a waterproofing agent is mixed with this concrete so that like i said before when it comes in contact with the water it will 
be in the crystallized form it will change the crystalline form and prevent water from entering into the inside of this uh, basement so that is the that thing we are using it in the raft foundation as well as the retaining wall foundation retaining wall uh, side areas okay and then another thing is that when they dig this particular area uh, first they will pour the as you know the pcc they will pour pcc concrete will be there and after that the raft is coming so before the raft foundation comes they put a sheet called hdpe load sensitive membrane hdpe load sensitive membrane if they put it there and after that they do the raft foundation so what happens is that the raft will have got a self weight of its own and more add on weighting is coming over the top of that raft foundation so as the weight adds on the hdpe load sensitive membrane is sensitive to load it it adds it acts as an adhesive agent it 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 got uh, more connected or it got connected more with this uh, raft foundation and it, thus it prevents uh, water coming from the uh, downside to enter into the basement level so it is load sensitive membrane so that is these are the things uh, for the foundation part and for if it comes to the is uh, deck area as we, as i said before we are using the pu polyurethane sheet and then or the apb or sheet membrane <coughs> sbr sheet here here terrace also and then comes into the toilet and kitchen area like i said before we are using two component component materials and also in swimming pool if there is a swimming pool in this tower we can also use the two component waterproofing agent there also material there also but along with that in order to add to the uh, tensile we need to put more tensile strength to this swimming pool area because heavy load is coming there as water the self weight will be very high so that we need to add fiberglass tissue agent also along with this uh, two components so that it it will give more uh, tensile strength and uh, the elasticity of this material will also getting is because of this agent and then coming to terrace again coming to terrace in especially in north india and maybe in the mid part of india you can see uh, they are using brick bat kova it's a it's a thing where they they are putting bricks in a particular size along with the cement mortar there uh, so that it will add as a waterproofing for the roof as well as a uh, thermal insulation but uh, there is a big advantage that it it will add to the total load that load of the building that it adds to the total load of the slab so that is a disadvantage for that and then terrace uh, apart from the brick bat kova we can use again the pu sheet or pu uh, pu spray we can use polyurethane then the tpo tpo like i said thermo thermoplastic poly olefine membrane or apb membrane we are we can use it for the terrace okay and this is regarding the membrane sheet or in the in the ground surface and there are other sources of water proofing treatment that we have to do sometimes we can see leakage in the walls or sometimes in the small small areas in the roof also so there we used to go go for grouting you all heard about grouting <coughs> the great grouting it can be injection grouting or nipple pressure grouting so injection grouting consists of injecting uh, uh, injecting acrylic or sbr polymers with two percent cement in it okay that means they will uh, uh, if there's a crack here some crack if you found a crack in a, in a in a wall they will cut it into a v shape they will find out where, from the point from where the leak is occurring and they will put a hole there and then put a nipple there and through the nipple they put a uh, pipe which connected to a pressure pump and through that uh, they will inject at a pressure at a pre certain pressure this uh, acrylic or sbr polymers with the two percent cement slurry into it and the only thing that we had to note that that the pressure at which the this slurry have to go into it should sustain or the wall should sustain the pressure if it is m15 grade concrete there it should not go beyond that m15 grade sustainability pressure so that thing should be taken care of and apart from this acrylic or S sbr polymer uh, slurry for this grouting we are we can use epoxy grout also but that is quite expensive which go comes to around uh, uh, 70 kilogram 70 uh, 70 rupees per kilo but this uh, acrylic comes around 40 rupees per kilo gram okay and i will say now regarding some of the polymer added materials which we are using for repair works in uh, walls and uh, uh, and uh, and uh, roofs sometimes for the waterproofing treatment 
one is PPCC which is called polymer Portland cement concrete this polymer is added into that uh, cement concrete so that is called polymer Portland cement concrete the other material is PMC polymer modified uh, cementitious mixture and third one is LMC lattice modified concrete all these are just they are adding the polymers to the, the concrete or the cement and this material we can use it for repairing work especially for water treatment purposes the latest one us by the CPWD uh, CPWD is telling that we have to go for crystalline mortar and water we have to add crystalline mortar to water and then you have to use that as a repairing material into the concrete surfaces where the leakage is happening or into the wall area where the leakage is happening and especially like uh, honeycombing or uh, ceiling ceiling crack or faulty construction joints in these areas we have to go for such materials so i think i have covered almost most of the things that that cover into the waterproofing materials and treatment so i hope you understand uh, what I intend to tell you regarding the waterproofing materials and treatment. So, if you like this video, please uh, subscribe, share, and like. Thank you very much.